Are you using Must Fabric Notebooks and want to get some secrets from the Azure Key Vault? Or would you like to run notebooks within your notebook? Or maybe you would like to do some file system operations like create directories and copy and delete files. All this and so much more is possible using notebook utils that we are going to cover in this video. Stay tuned! Welcome to the video, my name is Alexi and on this channel I cover Must Fabric and Azure related topics. Today we are going to check out notebook utils that allows you to do many essential things in notebooks. If you are familiar with Databricks notebooks and using DB utils there, this functionality is very similar to that. Also, notebook utils was previously called MS Spark utils. That still works, but that namespace will be deprecated at some point. But now enough talking, and let's open up Fabric and check out the operations that Notebook Utils allows you to do. Now I have my example notebook here open, that I have prepared to demo the functionalities of Notebook Utils. Let's start by running this help command that will give us more information about Notebook Utils. Basically Notebook Utils can be divided to these five groups of commands or functions that can be used. First we have these notebook utilities that will allow you to do some notebook operations, like run other notebooks within your notebook. Then we have the lakehouse functionalities that will allow you to create, delete lakehouses or get some information about lakehouses. Then we have these FS or file system functionalities that will allow you to do some file system operations like create new directories, copy files, and so on. Then we have the credential utilities that will allow you to fetch some secrets from Azure Key Vault or add some secrets there. And lastly we have these runtime utilities that will allow you to get some information about your notebook runtime. And next we would go through all these sections here and demonstrate few commands per section so you get an idea what kind of commands there are and what kind of things you can do with these commands. Let's start with these file system operations and let's run this help command for the file system to see what kind of commands we have available. And under this fs or file system operations we have these many different commands that can be found. And you can see that these are very similar to your Unix commands if you are familiar with those. For example, we can copy files or then use fast copy to more efficient copy that will then use AC copy on the background. We can move files, we can list contents, etc. Basically, this will allow you to manage file systems in your notebooks. Also, if we would like to get more information about specific command, we can run this help command for a specific method here. For example, we can run this for the fast copy or fast cp command and then we will get more information about that command and what kind of parameters it will take. But now let's demonstrate few of these commands next. Let's start with this ls or list command and list our file section of the lakehouse that I have attached to this notebook. And here we can see that we have there only one folder called demo folder one. And we can see that also here in the UI. And then we can use the make dirs command to create another another folder to that lake house and now if we would refresh this file section we would see another folder there and i can show to you that we have some files here in our first folder animals.csv and movies.csv and now we can demonstrate the copy command and copy one of those files the animals.csv to our new demo folder to using the copy command let's run this one and let's see what happens and it went through fine and now in the demo folder 2 we should have yeah there is the animalscopy.csv file there. Also a good thing to note here that these commands are not limited to fabric data stores like lake houses and we can use these to get some information and do some file system operations in Azure blob storages as well. Here I'm doing this list command to a blob storage that I have in Azure and there I have this container called data lake and in that container I have this folder called temp and in that temp folder I have this one file. So let's run this list command and see what it yields. We can see that we get that file that we have there as a result. And next we could see what is the content of that file using the head command. And we can see that it just said I'm a file in Azure Data Lake. Also, I have to note when running these commands to Azure Blob Storages, you need to make sure that you have a sufficient access to that blob storage, making sure that you have, for example, 
blob data contributor writes to that blob storage. Next, we can move to section 2, where we cover these notebook functionalities of the notebook utils. Let's run the help command to see what kind of functions we have here. We have, for example, an exit function that will allow us to specify an exit value for notebook. And then we have these run functions that will allow us to run some notebooks within our notebook. And then we have some preview functions that are quite new to these functionalities. For example, creating a notebook, getting some information about the notebook, deleting notebook and etc. First, let's talk about the exit function and let's run our help function for our exit function and see what it says. This method lets you exit a notebook with a value and a parameter we have to provide a value that we will be ready turning when the notebook runs. And under here I have this exit value here. We can run this and see what happens. Basically this just says that the exit value for this notebook was now some string value. And now I want to talk a bit more what we can do with this exit value. For example, if we would be running this notebook as part of pipeline or maybe some other notebooks, after that notebook has executed we would be able to return this exit value to that pipeline or notebook. For example, here I have a pipeline where I have have ran a notebook with an exit value and this exit value will be shown in the output after the notebook has succeeded. So we can check out the output and here we can find this property called exit value and here we have the value for that property. So this will allow us to return some information from the notebook to the pipeline or for example another notebook. So this will enable you to do some logic based on that. Next let's check out the run command of the notebook function functionalities. And let's run help function for that. Basically this command would allow you to run a notebook within your notebook. And let's check out how this works. And under here I have the example how we could use this run function to run one notebook within this notebook. So first we provide a path to that notebook. That is basically the notebook's name. Then we provide the timeout for that notebook, how long we would wait that to run. So I have provided here 60 seconds. And then we can give some parameters to that notebook if we have defined parameters in that notebook notebook. So here I'm passing this hello world parameter to that notebook. And then of course we are also catching that exit value that would come out from that notebook if we have defined exit value inside that notebook. But this time I have. So let's run this and see what happens. Now this command is running and it should only take a little while to run. And now that notebook has executed and we can also view that notebook run by clicking this link that will actually take us to that notebook that we ran. And we can see that we have defined some parameters there and we printed those parameters and then we had this exit value here that we also received to this top level notebook since we printed that. Next, let's check out this run multiple function that will allow you to run multiple notebooks within your notebook. Let's first run this help for our run multiple function and let's see what it returns. This help function returns quite a lengthy explanation for our run multiple since this is a quite complex function, but we will get into that shortly. But basically we have two options. We can either define this array of notebooks that we want to run or then we can define this DAG that is a bit more complex way of running notebooks what will allow us to do more complex stuff that we will get into shortly. Let's first demonstrate this simple way of running two notebooks using this array. So basically as a parameter we just define an array of notebooks or notebook paths that we want to run and then we just run that run multiple command. And now it will kickstart those notebook runs that should finish very fast since I don't have much happening in these notebooks. Now they have succeeded and we can see that both of those notebooks had these exit values that are also brought to this top level notebook. Next let's move forward and let's cover that more complex way of running this notebook using this DAG. Here we have to define this DAG and in this DAG we would define different properties per notebook. First we could define the notebook name and then the notebook path and then the timeout for those notebooks and the amount of retries that it will try to retry that notebook if there are any errors. And then we define also the retry interval and we can also pass parameters to these multiple notebooks using this DAG. 
Then I have some other notebooks defined to this same DAG as well. So basically in total I have three notebooks here. And cool thing about this DAG that it allows us to do some dependencies between these notebooks. For example I can say that this notebook 3 is depending on the notebook 2. So this notebook 3 run won't start before we have completed this notebook 2. Also we can define this kind of a total timeout for all of these notebooks and concurrency how many notebooks we want to run in parallel. Next let's run this run multiple function using this DAG that I have defined here. Also let's set this display DAG via graph width to true that will then visualize this whole notebook run that we can see so shortly. But yeah let's run this and let's see what happens. And now it will start running these notebooks and since we have defined that dependency that notebook 3 will actually wait until this notebook 2 has succeeded. But now they're running. Now all of our three notebooks have succeeded and we also get that graph because I added that property to visualize this notebook run and we can see that there is a dependency between these two notebooks in this visualization. Also we got those exit values to here as well. Then we can check out this list function that will basically just allow us to list all the notebooks in our workspace and we can run that to see what kind of output it will yield. Basically we get here a long list of all the notebooks that I have in this workspace. Then we can use this create function that will allow us to create some notebooks and here we have the parameters that it will be expecting. First we would have to give a name to our notebook, then a description and then some content and then the default lakehouse and default lakehouse workspace and workspace ID. But basically many of these have empty string as default value so we don't really need to specify them. And here I have some notebook contents that I would like to use to create another notebook. And if you're interested in how to get this kind of a JSON that will describe a notebook, you can go here to this download as and select this notebook format here that will be then this JSON format that you can then use to create notebooks based on that. And now let's use this notebook definition here to create a new notebook based on this. And let's run this command here to create that notebook. Now our create function has run and now we can try to find this notebook that we just created by browsing it from our workspace. Let, there it is and we can open up that notebook and see what kind of content it has. Basically this is the notebook that we just created and we already defined all of these things that we have here in that notebook definition that we had there. Basically there is the cell with that exit value and there is that cell with that print function. But yeah, this is the way how you would be able to create notebooks based on this notebook definition. And next we could use the delete function to delete that notebook. Let's run this help function here. So basically we would have to provide the name of the notebook for our delete function in order to delete it. And here I have the delete function and I would like to delete the notebook that we just created using it and let's run that. And now it has already finished and it returned true. So basically now it has deleted that notebook that we just created. Next let's move to section 3. But before we do that I would like you to know that I spent ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more marked fabric content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. But now let's move forward with the video. In the section 3 we have these lakehouse utilities and let's run first this help function to see what kind of commands we have. This is a preview functionality since these lakehouse utilities are quite new. We can for example create a new lakehouse, get some information about our lakehouse, update our lakehouse, delete our lakehouse or list our lakehouses in our workspace or list some tables that we have in those lake houses or load some data to our lake house table. And next let's first use the list function to list our lake houses that we have in this workspace. As you can see I have quite many lake houses and we get some basic information about those. We can use this get function to get the same information about one single lake house when we specify that lakehouse name as parameter for our get function. Then we can expand the information that we get with the get function using this get with properties function and then specify the lakehouse that we 
want to get that information about. And here we get a bunch more information about the lake house, like some one lake file bats and default schemas, etc. Next, let's move to the section four where we cover this credential functionalities and let's run our help function. And with these credential functions, we can, for example, fetch some secrets from Azure Key Vault or put some secrets there. And then we have some other functions like getting some tokens or validating some tokens. Let's first cover the get secret function that I think is one of the most used functions here. Basically for the get secret function we want to provide the Azure Key Vault URL and then we want to provide the secret name that we want to fetch. And also a good thing to note here that you need to make sure that you have sufficient access to that Key Vault when fetching secrets from there. For example you have the Key Vault secret officer's role added to yourself to that Key Vault then you will be able to fetch some secrets out from the key vault. And now let's run this and let's see what happens. As you can see, we managed to fetch that secret value out from the key vault because this didn't throw any errors. However, we cannot print that secret value directly to this notebook output. Since the fabric tries to make sure that the secrets are not exposed and it adds this redacted print if we try to print that out. However, there are a few workarounds if you really want to print that secret out to the log that is not recommended. For example, we can first turn that secret value into a list and then we can print that out like this. And here we can see what is the secret value there that it just says extremely secret value here exclamation mark. Next, let's move to the section five where we have this runtime functions. And let's run first the help function to see what kind of functions we have here. At this point, we only have this context function that will get the current runtime context. And we can run that context function and see what kind of output it will yield. Here we can see that we get some information about the context of this notebook. For example, the notebook name, default lake house name, default lake house ID, parent run ID, if we would run this as part of another process, etc. There are maybe some case use cases where you could use this to build some logic based on this, but this is some cool information that is good to know that it is available via this context function. I hope you now have an understanding what kind of things you can do with notebook utils in your notebooks in Marx Fabric. If you'd like to learn more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now, I thank you for watching and see you in that video.